two instruments together, the two string instruments with maybe a little percussion, maybe some vocals, and then you have something called song karaoke. <laughs> It's Saturday morning and the kids are returning to school, but there's a bounce in their step and a beat in their hearts because they're here to make music. It's called progressions. It's what music does. It's bring, it brings people together. It, it's joyful. One, two, Joshua, join us. Progressions is a comprehensive music education program of San Jose Jazz that puts instruments in the hands of 1,100 students and music teachers in the classrooms of schools that would otherwise have no music education. We started San Jose Jazz Progressions really around the desire to address an issue that we saw through kind of apparent in the other music education programs we were doing, like our big summer camps. We saw kids coming from 40, 50 different schools, and you saw this real disparity in the um, experiences and backgrounds that a lot of the students had coming to it. Some have, they're just surrounded by, you can tell, the great instructors in their home school, private lessons, parents who are really be, are time and opportunity to support it, and others who, who simply do not have that. So with progressions, we really saw a desire and wanted to develop a program that was in neighborhoods that were not receiving any form of music education. Here are AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. Form a team that can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of essential supplies in your loved one's home. Make a list of the care recipient's medications. Schedule regular calls to fight isolation. Finally, take care of yourself too. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety. For more caregiving tips, go to aarp.org caregiving. Hello, I'm Beto Arcos, curator of Latin music for San Jose Jazz. Tonight's Live from Home concert is brought to you in part by AARP and Adobe. At the age of 12, Ignacio Nachito Herrera stunned Cuban audiences performing Rachmaninoff's Concerto No. 2 with the Havana Symphony Orchestra. Many years later, he joined the famed Cubanismo Band as the lead pianist, arranger, and musical director. He was also a special guest pianist with Afro-Cuban all-stars. Nachito has played at many of the world's finest concert halls and prestigious jazz festivals, and he's received many awards over the years. Nachito has been playing with his own band and many different bands and orchestras, including the Minnesota Orchestra, Minnesota Youth Symphony Metropolitan Orchestra, the Cuban National Symphony, the Naples Philharmonic Orchestra, Chippewa Valley Symphony, University of Wisconsin Eau Claire Big Band, and many others. Today, Nachito's musicianship continues to wow audiences everywhere, as I know he will wow with you tonight. After the performance, please join me for a special conversation with Nachito. And now, please welcome directly from his home, the fantastic Nachito Herrera, live from home.
Hi, how you doing, my dear friends um, there in California, specifically in San Jose? Here I am, your friend, Machito Herrera, uh, ready to play some music for all of you. Thanks so much for inviting me. Muchas gracias. I hope all my dear friends that you are to stay safe, and let's keep praying for very soon, to, very soon to get together there. Take care, and uh, here we go. Let's play some music.
Hi, my friends. The first tune was called Tulipan Cuatro Diez. Uh, it is a very important street in Cuba, which a lot of musicians live there, and a lot of music has been created there. And uh, now the next piece I want to play it is called Hope, Esperanza. Uh, that was a piece I composed after, as you know, I, I, I am one of the COVID-19 survivors and one of the 17th survivors around the world using the ECMO program. And um, this tune, I actually play it after being 14 days in coma from March 28th, and then I wake up on April 11th. And the next day, my wife contact had people of my company, and then my uh, a guy I call he's my personal sound engineer because I have been working with him for almost 20 years already, my friend Greg. Uh, from the Dakota Jazz Club, he decided to take a risk of bring his personal keyboard to the ICU room. I was there, and it was realistically when I started to feel like it, I was in a really bad shape. I couldn't even play faster. I couldn't even do anything. I, I didn't have enough control in my finger. All I was shaking, but I was able to play a few notes, and this melody just came to my head, and 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 I keep it in my head until I was able to back home and um, play it in my piano and actually write it down. So uh, it is a pleasure for me to play for all of you. Hope. Esperanza.
like the kind of like a program or selection of tunes I decided to play for all of you today. It has been a little bit of uh, different things. Uh, so this one, this tune was called Spain in the Twins. And the reason why I decided to call it Spain in the Twins is because, the, as you know, the Cuban music has a big influence in between the culture and the music from Spain and from Africa. And Twins, because as you know, I have been living in here in Minnesota, uh, which is called actually the Twin Cities, uh, for almost 20 years already, which I would like to invite all of you to come here to Minnesota next year to celebrate my 20th here in this wonderful state. So that's why I decided to call Spain the Twins based on the influence of the music from Europe with Spain and with the melody, and then Twins because... I live here in the Twin Cities. I hope you like it. It's kind of like Latin jazz. But I want to make a tribute now to one of the wonderful uh, musicians of jazz ever, Mr. Wayne Shorter. And um, I really love this tune, and I have been playing forever. It is wonderful, and it's kind of like a feeling of a cha-cha-cha inside that tune, too. It is called Speak No Evil.
speak no evil. Now, you know, when you talk about jazz, specifically in my own opinion, I don't know that you think the same way. I hope so. But when we talk about jazz, it is impossible to skip the name of George Gershwin. Because, as you know, I have been trying always to prove like a music is just one. It's music. doesn't matter if you do jazz or Latin jazz or, or pop or R&B or even classical because the, the, even from classical you can get a lot of things uh, specifically technique and patterns actually you can use in jazz later and um, George Gershwin is uh, one one of the most important representation of the music of this country and I specifically remember he always even on classical music trying to trying to find this kind of connection in between the classical and jazz lots of different tunes like um, I got rid of him so much time. Uh, even this, uh, even the very famous Rhapsody in Blue. You know, it's always you can feel that kind of like a, uh, a jazz feeling right there. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to play this uh, uh, little concert for you, and not to incorporate some occasion things. So that here is a, a version of uh, I Got Rhythm.
That was La Comparsa uh, for one of the most important representation of a classical Cuban piano, Mr. Ernesto Lecuona. If you don't know so much about him, I just want to tell you like he's actually the composer of the very well-known tune called Malagueña, which hopefully if next year uh, things start to open and venues and we can back to play for all of you there as I did also last year having a wonderful, wonderful time and experience playing twice 
on the same day, I will be more than happy to play for all of you. Now, it is a time for me to make a tribute to somebody is the maestro, one of the greatest maestros of Cuban music. Everybody knows him because uh, he was part of the wonderful project called Buena Vista Social Club. And I am talking about the guy who was able to transmit to me all he knew about, it, specifically the one very important Cuban style, which is called Cha Cha Cha. Obviously, you know who I'm talking about, the one and only Mr. Ruben Gonzalez. And here is his, his uh, very famous version of uh, El Cumbanchero. Tribute to the one and only Mr. Ruben Gonzalez. And now I want to play just one more piece for all of you. And before I do that, I definitely want to say again, thank you so much to the Holy Promoter and the whole people who have been organizing this uh, 
very wonderful uh, video, San Jose Summit Jazz Festival. And um, hopefully, you know, this is just the only one we can do virtual because I always have so much fun when I go there and play for all of you. And uh, But at the meantime, I want to say please stay safe and uh, let's keep trying to get the music alive because, as you know, music is the very wonderful, beautiful language. The most important thing is always get together. That's one of the important reason why to always keep the music alive and play music because when you play with different musicians you always get together and together is the only way we are always going to be able to win any kind of battle in our life so thank you so much again for having me uh, and i hope to see all you soon and this is my humble tribute to all of you to this very beautiful country to all of you to give us the opportunity as an immigrant to come and enjoy your house and your country. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Hello and welcome to San Jose Jazz Summer Fest. And this is the moment where we take some time to talk to the artists that perform uh, in the series called Live From Home. I'm Beto Arcos, curator of Latin music for San Jose Jazz Fest. And I'm very, very pleased to welcome the great, the fantastic, great pianist from Cuba, Nachito Herrera. Nachito, welcome to this very special uh, opportunity we have with you. <laughs> How is that? How are you doing, my brother? How is everything going there? Oh, it's great. It's so good to see you. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see you. And 
after such an amazing performance. Um, tell me how, how are you how are you doing? I mean, you you had a, a bit of a of a situation recently, and and yeah. you are one of the miracles of this you know situation we're living today. Yeah, well, uh, thanks God, I am doing great. I am doing better. I am almost full recovered for the very unfortunate, you know, journey, if we can say it in some way, you know, on, at the end of the month of March, um, exactly on March 28th, I get admitted at the St. John Hospital here and close the city where I live in Maplewood in Minnesota because I present some kind of symptoms of, of a COVID. But um, by the time I get to the hospital, I was completely <clears throat> unconscious. I was completely disorientated, even in my house. I didn't even know where was my living room or the bathroom. And then my, even my wife and my daughter, Midalis, had to help me, you know, to get into my car. And so that is exactly how bad I was when I get admitted on the St. John Hospital. And then right after that, uh, they decide like they didn't have enough equipment to treat me there so they uh, in the evening they moved me to the ICU room at the hospital of uh, uh, the University of Minnesota. Uh, uh, doctors there they, 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 they were very optimistic but at the same time they were real you know they told to my wife this is something we have to take care of right away because barely we give him about three hours of life. That is exactly how bad I was. So uh, after 14 days in coma, I wake up on April 11th and without knowing where I was, why I was there, um, I didn't know anything. I thought, believe me, because uh, you know, as a Latinos, we are always joking and we don't even know like how far the jokes can go. And believe me, I'm a, a, I swear to God, I thought that was a joke. I, the, I thought that was probably like a group of friends and doctors and musicians, they decided to put me there just to make some kind of joke. I didn't realize exactly how bad I was. And, uh, and then until the next day, I was able to kind of like start to move my finger, but without any kind of control. So uh, uh, right after that, um, my wife, Aurora, contacted the people of my company and they brought me a keyword and I have to be honest with you my brother that was exactly the time I started to realize like how bad I was because I didn't have any control of my finger I didn't even have any strength I didn't hit, even have any power I couldn't even play a fast a scale like what you saw in San Jose you know like playing fast or nothing I couldn't do anything like that I said wow it looks like it. this is really bad and so uh, right there is when, you know, miracles, like people said, start to happen because uh, four days later, I was already walking without <clears throat> the cane, without anything. And then on the April 15th, I get discharged uh, from the ICU directly to home. And, and But yes, I was a really bad experience, but uh, now I am pretty much full recover, back to practice in my piano, back to play, and definitely looking forward to keep praying, you know, together to see this all gone, and, and then back to get together in San Jose, hopefully next year, because it is one of my biggest dreams, go and spend some time with all of you there as soon as possible, please. Yeah, it's uh, it's really, really touching story, Nachito, that you're sharing with us, and I really thank you for that, and thank Thank the gods, the Orishas, for having helped you with this situation. I think we, we do have to say thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Nachito, you, you come from uh, a, a place, a country, a region, uh, a culture uh, where piano, the piano, uh, in a sense, there's been schools of piano playing. There are yes. powers, figures that have, in a sense... Yes paved the way, just like Alewa paved the way for you to come out uh, and, and do <laughs> yes, well. Yes, indeed. Um, we can go back in time, but I'll just mention some names, you know, Ernesto Lecuona, uh, Lili Martinez Griñan, uh, Peruchin, uh, Rubén González. Um, mm. I mean, 
we, we can just keep going. Uh, there are some major figures of piano that, uh, yeah. that have come before. The great Chucho Valdez, um, Gonzalo yeah. Rubo Cava. All of them, and, right. And uh, lots of great, 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 fantastic piano players, yeah. So, and you, and, and then there's also this other aspect of, of, of Cuban culture and music, and that is that uh, it's been said that in Cuba there are three schools, at least three that I know, uh, definitely the conservatory where you, of course, spent a few years, <laughs> shall we say. Yeah. Uh, there's the street or the popular culture and there is home, right? Three, yes. different, three different schools. Yes. How, how do they come together in a pianist like you? Because we see that very clearly in your style, in your approach. We see classical, we see jazz, we see popular music. We feel the vibe of the street, we feel, but we also feel this kind of intimacy of, of, of home, right? Yeah, well, uh, thanks so much. That's a great question. Uh, those three things have always to come together. And, and for me, that means a lot in my personal life because it is more about, like, for example, at the home, home, uh, uh, my mom, with a wonderful musical ear. She took about seven years piano lesson, but uh, I don't know this also, you know, like my, uh, my father was a professional piano player. So that uh, from, home, from home, I get the discipline of practice because my mom was very strict with that. One, once I was just like a six, seven years old and I told her, mom, I definitely wanna become a, piano player, I want to get admitted on the uh, music conservatory. She was very uh, pacific with me and I said, you know, that's a huge discipline for the kids because it, it, right now you got approximately about 16 years of your life, which you will have to say goodbye to lots of kids things so like a play in like what we do in our country, play baseball on the street with the friends and things like that. Something sometimes is getting difficult because you need to spend a lot of time. My father, playing always with different uh, bands and orchestras. Uh, so I learned a lot of things from him. A school is so important. I always told to everybody, you know, once you get into the music conservatory, which actually it is very competitive because you know, we don't have so many music conservatories in Cuba. So just to get accepted, on the music conservatory, you have to go through the different tests. So you need to practice all the time. So once you get admitted, once you get accepted on the music conservatory, the best thing you can do is take huge advantage of that and practice and learn and study every day because that, that is what you are going to get the, the whole different things you need down the road for your professional career, your technique, uh, knowing the life of, um, and the culture of different countries and knowing the music of uh, many different composers, including classical composers, which we do study in Cuba too, like the music of Bach, Chopin, Liszt, Rachmaninoff, Brahms, and uh, obviously the street. Cuba music is from the street. Cuba music, if you don't go and play uh, um, all in the, those big carnivals and the big celebrations we always do in the summer with different bands. And, uh, and if you don't go to the Callejón or Hamlet and play the rumba there uh, with the people, and then you can't, you can't learn the roots of your music because it, uh, as everybody knows, it is the syncretism and the connection in between the music from Europe and specifically Spain and Africa. So how can you play the Wawanko, a rumba? You have to go to the streets, you have to go there and learn exactly from them. You know, so it is, it is this kind of perfect combination once you have the opportunity to go through the three of them and then and take a huge advantage like that I did that you remember when I was playing, for example, with uh, Cubanismo, I got the honor to play with Mr. Tata Winnes one of the biggest representation of the Cuban uh, precaution all around the world. I got a privilege even to go to San Jose, to San Francisco, the, but 
several times as a piano player of uh, Cubanismo. So it is putting the whole uh, experience together and then trying to prove to the world like a music is one. Music is just one. It is just music. And if we get a possibility to try to put that kind of cocktail, that kind of shake, and including the classical technique you are learning, you know, from the music conservatory pros, the, the, everything, the discipline and the popular music you are getting from the family, from your house, plus that root, the feeling, the soul you get from the Afro-Cuban music on the street, well, I think it has definitely a bliss. So, and that's, you know, that's what I have been trying to, to prove all the time. And um, I don't know if you know, like actually Ruben Gonzalez was one of my personal teachers when I used to live in Cuba. I learned a lot of things from Ruben Gonzalez and I, I got a wonderful time spending with him. And believe it or not, I was able to play with the Enrique Horin Orchestra when even Horin was alive at the Capri Cabaret in Cuba. So wow. for me, it's so important to combine those three things, you know, and that's what I have been doing all my career. Yeah. Let's just for the sake of uh, making sure people know who we're talking about here, Rubén González, uh, you know, obviously people, many people in this country know him because of his work with the Buena Vista Social Club. Yeah. Uh, he sort of became known, but he already had established a really solid big career, including uh, just two names. He played with Arsenio Rodriguez uh, after, you know, a few, for a, for a couple of years back in the day, before exactly. Arsenio left for, for New York. And he also played, as you mentioned, uh, with Enrique Jorrin, one of the architects of what we call, or what's called cha-cha-cha, one of the That's major exactly. figures of music in, 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 you know, the classic Cuban music that everybody knows around the world, major figures. So this is really amazing to, to find out from you because we, we get, when we hear your playing, as we heard, and, and I have to say that moment where you, there were two moments where you played at the San Jose Jazz Festival. One was at the main stage last, uh, it's a year ago, right? Uh, in the summer. Yeah. Uh, but then there was a second opportunity where you played at the um, Café Strict, where you were joined for, a, for kind of a jam session uh, after your set by none other than Steve Ture on trombone. And, uh, and one of our, one happens to be my friend here in Los Angeles. He's also from Cuba. He's also part of a great uh, family of musicians, uh, Leider Chapotin, who played yeah. the <laughs> who's related to the great Chapotin. Uh, he's like great grand Indeed. nephew or something like that. Um, yes. So all of this amazing music that we hear from you comes from that, that all these things that you mentioned. Tell us uh, briefly, Nachito, uh, I've, I've learned that the tumbao, that the, the montuno that we hear on the piano initially started with the tres, with the tres yes. guitar and then yeah. it transferred to the piano, right? Yes, yes. Well, as far as I know, you know, uh, uh, piano wasn't uh, very, I don't want to say that wasn't an uh, important part of uh, the, kind of like the beginning of the Cuban music, but originally, you know, when we started to talk about like a song, uh, S-O-N, which is, a, 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 you know, a, a Cuban style, uh, the, the type of uh, ensembles that start to play that kind of music didn't incorporate a piano until later down the road. So the tres was the instrument in charge to play what we call today montunos or tumbaos, like a... So, and then, you know, what we did with the piano was actually start to incorporate the possibility of play with the two hands so you you got ten fingers to use uh, kind of uh, increasing the harmony um things like that but honestly at the very beginning uh, uh a truest was taking the the biggest responsibility on 
play those montunos. What I always told to my students and to all my friends today when they see myself and when they hear myself to play those kind of uh, montunos, I always said it is better always go to the root and the root is on the tress. Tress is a, a wonderful instrument you can follow and get the feeling of something we work with Cuban music almost 100% of the time, which is called syncopation. So that uh, uh, you want to play good Cuban piano montunos, don't start to listen the piano at the very beginning. It is better go back to the roots and start to listen to the dress players like a Papi Oviedo, like a Francisco Pancho Amat, like obviously Arsenio Rodriguez. So that the, we have a wonderful deep school of dress players, uh, a, a John player, a very good friend of mine. We traveled with Cubanism for many years together, Koto, which is another great uh, dress player in Cuba. So um, what the piano did was just start to incorporate the technique with the probably different type of sound I, I, I'm using, but believe me, it is always based on the roots of the dress and then obviously the revolution of the Cuban Montuno started to happen with Ruben Gonzalez, with Lili Martinez, with uh, Pupi Cesar Pedroso, uh, with uh, Jose Ito Gonzalez. Each of them has a strong responsibility in the creation of or the development of what we know today as a Cuban piano Montuno, because when you listen to uh, Ruben Gonzalez, it is different than Lili Martinez, it is different than uh, Pupi Cesar Pedroso, uh, you know, very famous Cuban player from Los Van Van, and uh, for many years, almost 19 years, he has his own orchestra. I could definitely play you even an example of each of them to, to you know, for people hear about how different and how wonderful they did, you know, in incorporating this or, or like renovating or making a revolution of the Cuban piano. It is important to listen to all of them all the time. And finally, because we, we're running out of time, but um, I wanted to ask your opinion of some some of the younger great pianists that are coming of age now. We have um, pianists like uh, Harold Lopez Nusa, like... Uh, Uh, the great um, David Viregis, uh, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then there is uh, Roberto Fonseca. No, David Luna. Yeah, David Alfaro. Yeah. Sí. Yeah, there's yeah, some uh, great uh, pianists, right? And they're also adding a new voice to the, to the classical tradition, to the popular music tradition that they all come from. Because one thing that's important to note is that most of you, all of you, who come from Cuba were schooled, were educated with Rachmaninoff, like you said, with Tchaikovsky, with Bach, with Brahms. Yeah. But at the same time, you have something that is really equally as important, as you said, which is the music of, of popular culture, dance. Yeah, dance. I think it definitely as soon we, you know, uh, uh, me, I consider myself part of the kind of like the generation of the middle because I am not the generation of, for example, of Chucho Valdez because he is older than me, but I am actually older than Lopez Nusa or, or Rolandito Luna. So uh, uh, when I see these kind of uh, guys uh, that are playing and actually the way they play with, with for me, in my own opinion, they are wonderful, uh, fantastic players that are uh, I think that we are all covered, we are all protected because of this generation of a new Cuban pianists are understanding like uh, music is one, but we, won't, we don't want to forget never where we are coming from and actually how rich is our music and how um, high respect everybody has all around the world for uh, our uh, very famous Cuban music. So when I see uh, Rolandito Luna uh, 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 playing, which I have been having an opportunity to, to even be in, in Havana with him and, and talk for a really long time, we feel like 
I think we are doing the right thing with this new generation, inspiring them to continue to defend or what we have been defending all our career, which is the most important thing is like music is just one. It's music and, and, and if you got an opportunity to put this all cocktail together and the like when you talk for example about Lopez Nusa, Harold Lopez Nusa is coming from the very musical family in Cuba and now Lopez Nusa and Rui Lopez Nusa here, uh, it is a wonderful drummer there too. David Alfaro is a great piano player. So that, uh, I think that, uh, that is the time when we have to take a, a, a serious responsibility on what did you mean for this new generation, what you have been doing in your career, which it can definitely mean to something for them and continue to prepare that generation for them to go by themselves down the road. And so uh, uh, um, it is no doubt. I feel very happy when I can see the calendars and all of them are playing actually everywhere. Because I said, like I always said, you know, it is always a little bit of room for every bear, for everybody around the world. You know, you don't have to compete. No, it is completely opposite. Let's get together. Let's continue defending the music all around the world because the music as itself, it is a language. It is a vocabulary which is even allowed us to play with all many international musicians, even if you don't know how to speak their language. As soon as you speak the music language, you are able to play with a lot of great musicians. So, so the, uh, 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 I want to take advantage of this interview with you, my dear friend, and said, let's continue to get together. Let's continue to work together. It is always a room in the many different events and festivals and performing at centers and everything for everybody in the world. The most important thing is know like we are here to make people life easier. When they come to see your performance, they want to get completely away of different situations they have to deal with their own life. So, and then this the challenge or the responsibility of knowing like if somebody is looking at you. For example, the new generation of musicians, not just a piano player. It is what you do in your regular life. It is what, you know, like how you practice. It is how you be as a person, you know, in your life. So uh, uh, for me, it is amazing when I can see these great musicians doing what they're doing. Terrific. Well, Nachito, we have to leave it at that, and I think that's a great way to end this conversation with you because, after all, music is what brings us together, and, and really, really thank you for, for all the work. And I'm looking forward to seeing you alive and over there at the San Jose Jazz Festival sometime in the near future, hopefully next year. Let's keep praying together for sure. I am definitely looking forward to do it. Please stay safe. And, and, and I hope definitely to see all of you very soon. God thank bless you so much. all. Thank you so much. And thank you to your wife, wonderful Aurora Gonzalez, for all her great help. Thank you very much. Gracias. Hasta luego. Adios, hasta luego. Gracias. Yeah.